Uh, hi, I'm Rashita. I'm from Peep and Moon. And uh, welcome. Hi, hi. Moon. Yeah. So we'll just start. So uh, firstly, tell me about this uh, season, the reject season two that you've come up with. And it is, you know, more thrilling, more gripping. It has addition to the cast. So tell me more about it. Yeah. So season one was basically more about setting up the world, setting up the characters, setting up the whole uh, universe, so to speak, you know. Yeah. And now that it's been received so well, uh, we don't, uh, we can take the characters and the plotting uh, way ahead and, you know, go a little bit more uh, crazy with the whole uh, plotting and the thrill element to it. Uh, because they are young, uh, you, know, uh, you know, 17, 18 year old, you know, just getting out of their teens, you know. Yeah. And uh, so their issues and the complexities that they get stuck in are very grave but they still arise from a very peculiar and non-regular uh, situations, you know. Yes. So getting a, a thriller going in a campus uh, has its own, uh, with a lot of music, you know. I think it's a it's a great area to be in. Not many people have tried it. Not many people have been yes. successful at it. We've been fortunate. And, uh, you know, season one was so well received. It had uh, thriller elements in it. And we saw that the response to the thrill and music was so good that we uh, increased the whole uh, thriller and musical element in this season. Plus, we've uh, also added Isha Gupta into this uh, season because uh, we had a very dynamic role of a, you know, um, a female uh, Indian cop in Singapore who is, uh, you know, uh, out to prove something uh, herself, you know, to her own, uh, you know, organization and uh, uh, how she gets involved in uh, the lives of these uh, kids. And, uh, you know, at some level, she is, uh, uh, you know, a major obstacle and uh, a major problem for all of them, you know. Okay. Uh, so now, of course, it has been a successful. People are watching it and enjoying it. But at first, when you thought about it, the idea came into my, your mind. How was it like? Like, where did it come from? Well, uh, season one came up from a conversation with, uh, uh, you know, uh, with Mr. Tarun Katyal um, when we were discussing, uh, you know, uh, various ideas that I had. And I really wanted to do a campus thriller, campus musical thriller. Uh, I had done a, a television show many, many years ago at the beginning of my television career yeah. called Remix. Yeah. I never visited that genre again, you know. And uh, I know the kind of cult following that show has, you know. Yeah. popped up so many stars and so much, you know. And there's a whole generation that's grown up on it. And, you know, I can see a small smile coming in your face as well. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I really wanted to get into that genre again. I really thought that, you know, uh, from then to now, how is that, you know, young adult space changed, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, what is the, uh, you know, uh, how different it is now? How, how, how different are the young adults, Indian young yeah. adults now? Uh, also, because then uh, we also realized that there is a culture of the rich kids going abroad and studying, you know. And I thought that, you know, again, that's an area that no one is really, uh, you know, uh, showing, you know, when yeah. uh, you actually have problems that money can't solve, you know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, you could have all the wealth, but you still have issues, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, that's a world that I am uh, more familiar with, you know. And uh, I thought that it was, uh, no one is doing it in that genre. And I, I, I knew that there was a space out there for that, you know. Uh, everybody's being true to their uh, world that they come from. So I thought, you know, why not be true to the world I come from or my, my kids coming from, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. What about this OTT platforms? OTT platforms are literally doing so well, of course, during the lockdown. And even when the lockdown was not there, the platforms were like flourishing everywhere. So what is your like viewpoint on it? I think it's a great convenience, you know, you can see the kind of content that you want to see. It's a completely, yeah. uh, you know, uh, consumer driven platform. Uh, you don't like something, you can stop it wherever you want. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's great. And, you know, I'm focusing completely on this. I've really not uh, done any linear television or uh, films. I'm yeah. focusing all my energies and I'm focusing my company's uh, energies onto this. Now, of course, everybody out of uh, sure, uh, uh, you know, lack of opportunity has to do this but uh, you know at rose uh, rose movies we decided uh, 
about three, four years back, that we'll stop uh, linear TV and we'll stop pitching for films. We had signed a lot of directors, you know, yeah. and we're working on various number of scripts. I really didn't see where that was going beyond the point, you know, because eventually it's all going to come on the OTT, you know. So yeah. I said, why not then focus on this? Because, you know, it's going to take X amount of time to build. Uh, because, you know, the kind of content uh, on uh, OTT is very different. Yeah. Because like I was telling you, you know, you have an option of, you know, turning it off anytime you want. Yeah. It's not even like a television show where, uh, you know, the, an ad comes in the middle. So mm. you get a little bit of relief. Yeah. And then when you come back, you know, then you, you, you can restart it, you know. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't even have that, you know. So you've got to be like, you know, pulsing all throughout, you know. you yeah. got to have something that is hooky and something that is, you know, grabbing the attention of the viewers. Uh, in every scene, in every uh, shot moving forward, you know. Nice. So I found that exciting, you know, and I think um, I think I'm uh, fairly well, uh, you know, adept to do that, you know. Okay, that's nice. So tell me something about the music collaboration that, uh, you know, the show has done and you have done with Ankur Tiwari and the musical in it. How is it like? Well, last season we had Sneha Khandalkar on it, you know. Uh, uh, Sneha was going to have a baby, so Sneha and me had a chat, and you know we had a chat with Ankur, and uh, I told uh, Ankur that you know I can't do it with Sneha anymore because she needs a, a a bit of a relief, a bit of a, a you know maternity leave as you may call it, uh, and uh, you know Ankur is such a great guy, you know, and yeah. uh, he's such a wonderful human being, and he has such beautiful tunes, and you know it's not uh, I thought it would be exciting to throw Ankur into a world yeah. like this, you know versus, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the kind of music that he's generally associated with, yeah. because uh, I just feel that within this, uh, you know, uh, uh, teeny bopper space, he will give something new in that space. Yeah. So Ankur, uh, Ankur in turn, uh, you know, collaborated with uh, Ashutosh Patak, you know, yeah. and Ashutosh Patak is someone who runs a music school in Mumbai called uh, TSM, you know, True, okay. uh, True School of Music. Uh, I don't know if they've heard of it or no, but it's uh, it's really doing very well. And, you know, he's got a lot of young kids working with him and, you know, training and, you know, uh, trying out stuff. So we actually went there to his true school of music, got all the kids to uh, get part of the album, you know, understood what the kind of stuff they are listening to, you know. Yeah. And uh, between Ankur, Ashu and um, the kids over there, you know, we came up with this album and, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it's interesting to uh, uh, understand uh, what uh, you know a creator may perceive the young likes versus what they actually actually like you know yeah. and uh, uh, you know uh, so actually getting that generation to work on it with uh, Ankur and Ashu was a very interesting and a very uh, you know uh, eye opener in a sense. You know. Okay, that's nice. Uh, also, what new will we see? Like, of course, there are a lot of new things as addition in the cast also. But what, according to you, is that factor, you know, that's completely new in the second season? Well, uh, it's a uh, out and out thriller, you know, this time, you know. And uh, there's so many, uh, I haven't seen a tele, uh, I haven't seen a, a series with so many uh, uh, characters, all of them having their own backstories, mm -hmm. all of them having their own tracks. And so many twists and turns, you know, like yeah. each track could be a season by itself, you know. So uh, the narrative, uh, you know, the, the story uh, that was cracked along with uh, Novani Chakravarti, yeah. who's also a very famous uh, author, you know, his books do so yeah. well. He's doing really well with the young adult space. Uh, so we got him on board. Uh, he was there on season one as well. So yeah. we got him on board because, you know, his kind of material is really well lapped up with the, you know, young adults. So I think the 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 pace of the show, uh, the 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 thriller of the show, how each and every band member is uh, entrapped uh, yeah. to work against each other, you know, and then there's a cop who's on their tail, you know, uh, is a very exciting, uh, you know, uh, premise and a very exciting narrative, you know, on the show. Yeah. Plus, of course, the locations, the look, you know, the styling, you know, they're all good-looking kids, and you know. Uh, they all have, sorry, they all are, you know, kids with great personality. Yeah. And um, so I think it's a, it's, it's a great package of, you know, uh, you know, uh, high adrenal, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, music and, you know, uh, sophistication and, you know, it's got a, it's got a great mix of all that. You know. 
Okay, that's great. Also, the show has an instant connection with the youth, as you have mentioned. Also, I want to know: uh, was it very like difficult, sort of, to understand what the youth want today, and you know what kind of an audience is going to watch the show? Analyzing all of that. See, I think that you know, uh, you know, I've been seeing a lot of content, like all of us have been seeing, and I think that all the content that is doing well, whether on screen mm-hmm. or. on the ott especially you know they mm-hmm. are more uh, less forgiving on ott than they are mm-hmm. in cinema uh, there has to be a uh, you know a kind of uh, honesty to the world that you're creating you know and once you create that world then you know you should be honest to that world with all its good and bad yeah. you know so uh, for example in vjx if i wanted to look a certain way you know i cannot expect it to be set in india you know yeah. and uh, uh, you know it has to uh, uh, if i wanted to be real okay yeah. uh, if i wanted to be real then i need to take that leap of faith and you know uh, set it up in singapore you know yeah. because uh, and then if i set it up in singapore i get that look i get yeah. that uh, you know uh, uh, international feel to it but then also i'm stuck with certain elements which are like you know now the teachers can't talk in hindi yeah you know they have to talk in a universal language which is english you know yeah so uh, you know it's got its own uh, pros and cons you know so um, you know so like if there are kids from other uh, nationalities you know so uh, they will talk with their accents and they will talk with their uh, yeah. language you know i have to be okay with that then you know uh, i cannot uh, yeah. so then i have to find ways to explain that content okay. to the indian audience yeah and cross the language barrier you know what i'm saying True, i, I can't it, just yeah. rely only on subtitles yeah. you know uh, because there's a large audience that we are catering to who are not necessarily very interested in reading subtitles yeah. you know they're very restless you know so uh, then we got to find a logic as to why are the kids singing a hindi song to an international crowd you know True, so there has to be some some logic behind that you know so you have to have other performers also performing in japanese or in korean yeah. you know to show that everybody is performing as per their language True. you know so hence our kids are performing in hindi you yeah. know so uh, uh i think uh, these are things that you know uh, give it a sense of reality uh, yeah. it could be a reality, reality that is away from you you know it could not be it could yeah. it could be aspiration for you it could be a, it could be a different reality but yeah. it is has to be real in that world you know i cannot uh, yeah you know mix up uh, worlds and uh, yeah. and expect people to digest them you know i myself have made those mistakes in the movies and some of the movies that i have directed also yeah. you know when you uh, when you're young and you don't have that much understanding of the medium and you mix uh, mix the worlds you know as per your convenience you know so uh, so i think uh, be true true to the world that you set up is uh, i think okay that's great uh, i think the your recording is kind of stuck like uh the photo is stuck yeah hi yeah back hi yeah yeah hi yeah, yeah. so like i was telling you uh, you know like uh, you got to be true to the world and you know uh, so like for example rejects has uh, is a story about you know 17 18 year olds you know yeah. and there is a thought process of theirs you know which is uh, may not be as mature uh, as uh, you know someone who's 25 30 35 years old you know so you got to stick your neck out and think like those uh, kids you know and uh, take uh, decisions those characters the, the character decisions have to be of that age group you know yeah uh, the lingo has to be of that age group exactly you know? and uh, the morality also ha- has to be of that um, you know age group mm-hmm. and that morality morality is very different from our mor- morality i must tell you yeah you know okay uh, so i also wanted to ask that you know once you start creating something uh, what kind like do you did you expect that you know rejects is going to be you know doing good and it will be a successful show what was going on in your mind because a lot of filmmakers or a lot of you know directors are here that they say that we had no clue that how it's going to do so what was your you know perspective on it i knew that it was going to do well because uh, i had uh, you know done uh, some other stuff recently on television yeah. which didn't do well so yeah. i i was right there and i knew that you know if i did did, did this it would work yeah 
so i had a sense that you know we're on to something but uh, i uh, stuck my neck out uh, to be honest to the world in genre i think that is the biggest uh, you know accomplishment of rejects you know is that it's true to its world and genre you know so there was a sense of you know uh, also i had um, great partners with uh, z who uh, let me take new newcomers you know because again that yeah. brings a certain amount of honesty to it you know yeah so you have uh, you know newcomers who don't have any uh, you know baggage with them you know so yeah. people perceive them as these characters only so i think all that uh, all that helped you know in uh, setting up the show yeah it, uh, is there like a, it, it give me a sense yeah sure continue please yeah Yeah, no, 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 I'm done. I'm done. Okay, so uh, you know, as you mentioned about newcomers, uh, do you think some people like hesitate to uh, open newcomers because there's like a sense of you know, uh, thing that maybe it won't work or maybe we'll have to teach them to act in a certain manner? Was that there? Yeah, there is a there is a there is a kind of apprehension because you know. Uh, it wasn't there earlier on digital but uh, yeah. of late more and more in digital becomes mainstream they mm. also want known faces so that you know they can get a x amount of audience yeah. from day one and uh, also it's easier to work with uh, you know established or experienced people uh, but uh, you know um, in both the shows that i did last year hello mini and uh, rejects yeah. i think collectively of 7 uh, to 8 uh, at least 8 to 10 newcomers i have launched in yeah. the last one year and uh, they all got touch wood they all not uh, you know some aunt or uncle's kid or you know yeah. some cousin or some you know friends uh, children yeah. um, they are, they've come through uh, casting process through audition processing and uh, you know they have complete newcomers who have no contacts in bollywood yeah. and uh, the film industry and um, you know uh, there is a plus point of that as well you know they've got a great amount of energy and they've got a, you know different sensibility you know right like from outside um, so uh, having said that that i've been lucky but i can see in my other projects also there is a kind of a, uh, you know uh, hesitation to launch uh, yeah. to bring in newcomers you know uh, so that's a battle that's always been a battle you know yeah. i think that's good also in a, in a, in a way because you know then if you are going to go against the odds and you know put stick your neck out on somebody yeah then that person has to have that x factor you know to take yeah. on the world with you know yeah and then you know then a new star or a new known face comes into the uh, scene you know so at some level making it more difficult makes it better yeah. you know Okay, that's great. And also, you mentioned about you know remix, and everyone agrees. I think it has been a classic show. So, have you ever thought of like recreating it or getting a, a you know reboot version of it for the web space? Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear. Yeah. So um, I was asking that uh, you know you also mentioned, and I think everyone agrees that Remix has been a like classic show, and it has been a cult show. It has had its honest audience and has been very loyal. So have you ever thought of recreating the show or getting a reboot version for the web space? Well, uh, Karan and me have been discussing it for some time now. You know, to show. all of them grown up now you know yeah. but uh, uh, it was a licensed product from um, uh, for star you know and uh, rights have with star so it is something that star has to initiate you know and uh, we've sent them a few feeders but i don't think they're really interested you know so they i don't know they probably want to create a uh, different uh, you know products but yeah i mean there could be a version where you know uh, we could all come together without using the same brand name you know yeah uh, Maybe what do you know? Yeah, maybe season three of Rejects. I might uh, cast all of them as teachers or something. Like that. that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, lastly, tell me what is next for you? Are you you know looking for more uh, uh, web projects or what are you working on next? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me?
Can you hear me now? Yeah, but just like, you know, it's coming and going. So I'll just uh, repeat the question. I was asking that what's next for you? Are you looking like for more web projects and working on the web space? So what's next? Yeah, so we're doing uh, we're doing uh, Hello Mini uh, season two and hopefully season three as well at the same time, you know, uh, so that uh, that show is done so well. It's done over yeah. 120 million views on MX, you know, which I think might be a kind of a record for web series. You know? yeah. uh, so we're very happy with the success of Hello Mini as well. Yeah. And uh, uh, there are uh, uh, there are three four other things in, in the in the pipeline. Um, hopefully, uh, something with an international platform as well, you know. So, uh, but I can only talk about uh, Hello Mini just now, which is uh, in a development stage at the moment. So we're using this lockdown to rework the scripts and you know make it as exciting and thrilling as uh, season one was. Okay, that's great. Okay, thank you so much, Gauri. Thank you for talking with us. It was great. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Yeah. Uh, so lastly, you know, if you had to like give out a message for all the viewers of rejects, what would that, you know, what would you like to talk to them? Well, the only message in today's time is to stay home and stay safe and enjoy rejects on your television or your mobile or your laptop. And, uh, you know, spend at least a good four or five hours watching that. Yeah. and uh, stay safe at home and uh, this too shall pass and uh, we'll be all out and you know socializing again very soon and uh, yeah that's my message to everybody to you know be careful be safe and be sensible okay thank you so much for talking to us it was great thank you thank you